Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Love to be back in my hometown of the great city of Long Beach. Um, I want to thank everyone for being here today at this amazing press conference that many of us hoped we would never, ever have to have, but here we are. And we're going to continue to fight. I'd like to sincerely thank, of course, so many elected leaders and so many of the community leaders that have been in the fight for abortion rights, for reproductive freedom, and uh, just continuing to spread the message that we need to do more to protect not only our Californians that are here, but also so many folks across the state. I want to thank especially my good friend, Mayor Robert Garcia, council members that are here today, Council Member Uranga, Councilwoman Suli Saro, Council Member Mary Zendejas, I know our Vice Mayor Rex Richardson, and uh, Cindy Allen also. And of course, my former colleague and our great Attorney General, Rob Bonta, and again, so many, so many community partners that have done such great work to ensure that this fundamental right continues to stay. While the leaked draft decision from the Supreme Court has invoked feelings of dread and despair for so many across our state and throughout the nation, we know that it is lit a, uh, an opportunity for deep activism that will not waver in the face of adversity. Since Roe versus Wade was decided nearly 50 years ago, we knew this day would come. In fact, many of the uh, advocates here knew this would come in the last year. And so many of us fought at the state of California to provide so many reproductive justice and freedom bills. In fact, over a dozen bills have been passed to ensure to protect our rights even further. Specifically, SB 245, which was one of the bills that I passed to ensure that there were no cost uh, sharing, deductibles, any sort of cost sharing for abortion care in the state of California remained. That was passed, signed by the governor just early, earlier this year. But here's, here's where we are, friends. Over 28 states at this time are already going to ban abortion should Roe v. Wade be finally overturned. About 80 to 100 people seeking care across the state or across the nation are coming to California just for one provider. We know this. So we know that we have a lot of work to do. And it's, it's important that not only are we speaking what we need to do um, at the state level, of course there's a constitutional amendment in the works by Senate uh, President Pro Tem Tony Atkins, but we also have to ensure that our local uh, areas, our local elected officials are continuing to push with us because we know so many more pregnant people across California and across uh, this nation will be coming to seek refuge here in our great state. So with that, I want to say thank you again to Latinas for Reproductive Justice, Black Women for Wellness, uh, League of Women Voters, Planned Parenthood, NARAL, the list goes on, LGBTQ Center, because we know it doesn't end here. It might be abortion care now, it's going to be LGBTQ rights tomorrow, immigrant rights the next day. It's going to be continuing to suppress so many voices, and we cannot let that happen. Not here, and definitely not in California or Los Angeles. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to my dear friend, former colleague, our great Attorney General, Rob Bonta. Well, thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Senator Gonzalez, for your, your leadership, um, your friendship, your, your fight. And I want to thank all those that I'm standing up here with for um, doing all that they are doing to meet this moment, uh, to stand up for our values, uh, to voice who we are, what we will accept, what we will not accept, and to do what California has always done, uh, which is to fight, to fight for our values, to fight for our people, to fight for our rights. Uh, that includes fighting for the right to an abortion. Uh, to, uh, the right to reproductive freedom, the right to privacy, the right for women to control uh, their own bodies, free of any interference from politicians. And uh, uh, from our local level to our state to our federal level, uh, that fight, uh, that ferocity is on full display. So I just want to say thank you to Senator Gonzalez for bringing us together today. Thank you to Mayor Robert Garcia for his consistent uh, commitment to uh, reproductive freedom. and. We all know that uh, while we are for choice, we also know that Californians, we have a choice. We have a choice to express our agency, to act, uh, to fight, uh, not to and accept what some have said is an inevitable outcome, uh, but to ra raise our voices and uh, express our values. And so I choose to fight. Uh, I choose to fight for reproductive freedom and to fight for the rights that we have had uh, in this country for 50 years. 50 years of settled 
law, Roe versus Wade, has provided for the fundamental right to uh, an abortion, to reproductive freedom. Uh, that should be undisturbed. That should continue for 50 years and more. And um, all people deserve access to legal, safe abortion. We, we know that uh, abortion is, is uh, the demand and the need uh, will not change. Um, but we do know that this law, uh, if it becomes final, will lead to a reduction in access to safe abortions. People will get hurt. Health will be harmed. Uh, people will die. And so we're raising our voices to fight, and we're raising our voices to say, um, hell no. Hell no to uh, going backwards. Uh, hell no to reversing 50 years of settled law. Uh, hell no to stripping women of their right to reproductive freedom. Uh, so we're, we're raising our voices, we're saying hell no, and we're saying yes to women's rights, to women's choice. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and uh, let me introduce uh, an incredible leader, uh, my friend and my colleague, Mayor Robert Garcia of Long Beach. Thank you, uh, Mr. Attorney General, and we're always grateful to have you here in Long Beach, but I especially uh, want to thank Senator Gonzalez, who uh, there is no stronger champion uh, for uh, abortion rights, uh, to supporting uh, women, to making sure that we're all uplifting our LGBTQ plus community, uh, to ensuring that uh, immigrants are always having support than Senator Gonzalez. And so we're very grateful for her and her leadership in the legislature uh, on this really critical human rights issue. Uh, I want to just say, and it's important to repeat, that abortion is health care. Access to abortion is critical uh, in this country and across the world. Uh, we stand here together uh, here in Long Beach and across the state to ensure that this court's uh, reactionary and radical agenda uh, does not stand. Uh, we know that for 50 years, Congress has, put, uh, Congress has supported this constitutional right that's been enshrined by the court. And now we're in a position where this court is rolling back these protections uh, for, for, for women, for people across this country. It's important also that California and Long Beach remain a sanctuary of support for people that are looking to have access to abortion care. I'm really proud that just in the last few months, we have actually in Long Beach uh, partnered with Planned Parenthood on preparing for this moment. Uh, just a few short months ago, with our Planned Parenthood partners, uh, we, didn't, we put in place four initiatives here locally and in partnership with LA County. Uh, one, to, fund, to enhance funding at the health department level for abortion care, uh, two, to enhance training for city workers uh, across the community to deal and work with folks that are seeking abortion care, uh, number three, to expand the workforce, including new training programs uh, for people that are looking to work in this field, which we know is going to be so necessary. Uh, and lastly, a uniform, a uniform a referral system in the city of Long Beach uh, for people that are seeking access uh, to abortion health care. Uh, these four initiatives are currently happening in Long Beach. Uh, they're happening in L.A. County. And we're calling and have asked every city in the state of California to put in place these same four initiatives to ensure that we're doing our part here locally as the, as the, the Supreme Court uh, begins this incredible attack uh, on, uh, on abortion care, on, on women and, and all people that are seeking this important, this important treatment. We stand... Uh, with uh, anyone seeking an abortion. We stand with all the brave women that are leading this fight, and we won't stop this fight until we win. Uh, we're very grateful and, and happy uh, to be here. Uh, and with that, uh, I want to go ahead and introduce an incredible representative um, of, uh, of women in our community, and that is from Women of Long Beach, uh, Janine Pierce, also former councilwoman here in the city of Long Beach. Thank you to our, our mayor and our elected officials that are here today for their leadership. And I am here today representing the women of Long Beach, Nada Tushnet. The president could not be here with us today, but I've got a message from her. And her message today, oops. Her message today is we need to be clear. This is an attack on all women, but particularly poor women. Women of means have always had access to safe abortions, and they will after this decision. If the court were serious about valuing life, all women would have access to pre prenatal care. Now, black women and Latinas do not. 
and all women would have access to childcare and family leave right now. Poor women do not. We need to keep this fight on. I like to elaborate that the women of Long Beach think intersectionally. We understand that this is broader than a woman's issue. We understand this is a, an issue about family. This is about poverty. This is about the men uh, that are also making decisions whether to have a family or not. And the leadership that the city has shown us uh, should be a model for the state. We want to make sure that not only this state but other states that are looking to protect women and to make sure that they have access, whether they're in their state or not, that this is a model that can really demonstrate that we will step up and, again, lead as a state like a nation should be leading. And we call on our Congress members to act. We call on other states to step up. And we want to thank all the leadership that we've had here today. Thank you so much. Oh, I, oh, sorry. Next, I'd like to introduce Laura Jimenez. From, sorry, from Reproductive Justice. Latinas for Reproductive Justice. Good morning. I'm Laura Jimenez with California Latinas for Reproductive Justice. Um, I want to start by repeating something that the Attorney General said, and that is hell no. Hell no to the Supreme Court decision. Hell no to the arrests, prosecution, and incarceration of pregnant people and providers across this country. Hell no to infections and deaths from unsafe abortions that are going to happen because of this decision. This is a violation of the human rights of all people who can become pregnant. And so friends, I know we're going to talk about women a lot, but people with uteruses who identify of any gender, this, this is an issue. It is also an issue for the men who help us to become pregnant. Um, and from a reproductive justice perspective, this opinion from the Supreme Court is nothing more and nothing less than one more instance of the legacy of reproductive oppression that is woven into the fabric of this country. We know that people of all ages, genders, races, abilities, and classes will continue to seek and obtain abortions, and we will support that right, regardless of the Supreme Court decision. This is about bodily autonomy. We are clear about the connections between these abortion bans and restrictions and other recent legislation that attacks our trans and queer family. We must be clear that these violent laws that attack reproductive rights and our queer and trans families and immigrants and young people and people with disabilities are all connected. They are assaults against, against our autonomy as individuals, families, and communities. Taking away access to healthcare services such as abortion is reproductive oppression. Criminalizing trans or gay identities is reproductive oppression. Caging children separated from their families with, is reproductive oppression. Uncontrolled rent increases and evictions without cause is reproductive oppression. In California, advocates, organizations, communities, legislators, policymakers continue to work on a range of bills and efforts to protect the rights of all people, including non-Californians, to access abortion here, to protect the rights of the, of the abortion providers, patients, and any who support them, and make sure that all existing and potential gaps in access are filled. As people of color in this country, we have rarely, if ever, been able to depend on courts to declare that our lives and our families and our bodies matter. We have always found ways to care for ourselves, and this doesn't stop now. We are the ones we have been waiting for, and we will continue in la lucha. And now I'm pleased to introduce my sister in the struggle, Oniema Obiekia, from Black Women for Wellness. Good morning. Uh, my name is Oniema. I'm with Black Women for Wellness Action Project. As we grapple with the flurry of emotions from the recent events, I want to remind folks that the right to abortion care is still the law of the land. The leaked decision does not alter or revoke the rights promised or protected by Roe yet. What the decision does do, among other things, is unveil and make plain the blatant disregard for the health and well-being of women and birthing people, particularly that of BIPOC women, gender expansive folks, and birthing people. In a country where black women are three to four times more likely to die from pregnancy-related causes, the stripping away of the right to abortion care, an integral part of the full spectrum of reproductive health care, is downright cruel. Banning abortion nationwide would lead to a 21% increase in the number of pregnancy-related deaths overall and 33% increase among black women. 
A decision that aligns with the leaked draft or one that functions to overturn Roe denies our humanity and our inher inherent dignity. It denies our capacity to determine if, when, and how to lead full lives and care for our families on our own terms. Banning abortion would not eliminate the need for abortion care, and it in fact would open the door for criminalization of providers, women, and our systems of care. For black women and gender expansive folks whose bodies are disproportionately surveilled and over-policed, such a ruling would allow for criminalization of not only those who seek care, but also those who experience pregnancy loss. Audre Lorde said, there is no such thing as a single issue struggle because we do not live single issue lives. As black women and gender expansive people navigate the very real issues of inadequate, inadequate access to quality health care, absence of job opportunities, inadequate access to healthy food, I mean, racism as a whole, the struggle of access to abortion care is among the intersecting issues that determine the quality of our lives. From slavery to the era of the Mississippi appendectomy to now, black people have fought for bodily autonomy and reproductive freedom. We will not stand idly by as we are stripped of our constitutional rights. We will continue to push for a world where we all can live, work, and make decisions about our health with dignity. We will do this on behalf of those who came before us and fought so fiercely for our liberation, for the sake and futures of our community. Um, thank you so much for your time. And I would like to now pass it on to Dr. Eduardo Lara of the LGBT Center of Long Beach and lecturer at Cal State University, Long Beach. Buenos dias, good morning. Usually when I greet folks or after that I ask, how are you doing? And at this point, I know how we all are collectively doing. We're upset, we're angry, and those are probably understatements and there's probably more flowery language for how we're feeling. Again, I'm Eduardo Lara. I'm here on behalf of the LGBTQ Center and I stand here on behalf of the center to stand strong in, in solidarity with a woman's right to choose and other people of genders whose bodily autonomy is being threatened with the risk of losing Roe versus Wade. The center is a values-driven organization. Two of those values are intersectionality and also trauma-informed care. Let me speak briefly on those two values. One, it is important to note that the intersection of the LGBT community with reproductive justice. Two, it's also important to note that other genders, including those that identify as transgender men and gender queer, are also impacted by this threat to social injustice. And three, we also need to make sure that we situate the role of cisgender men as critical allies in this fight to protect Roe versus Wade when we're asked and to uplift and centralize women and others impacted directly by this potential decision. On the note of the intersection of the LGBTQ community, it is important to relate this to an important quote that the great Supreme Court Justice Sotomayor, a gem of a justice, shared with us when first listening to the Mississippi case. She said, and I quote, Will this institution survive the stench that this creates in the public perception that the Constitution and its reading are just political acts? I don't see how it is possible. Similar to the eloquent words of Supreme Court Justice Sotomayor, I agree. Right? It's also important to note this in the arc of what we're experiencing right now in history. Threats to transgender youth in Texas, threats to LGBTQ curriculum and teachers that there teach sacred information to LGBTQ youth. This is a longer arc of the backlash of many social justice issues that have occurred in the last decade, including the fight for Black Lives Matter. So when we put everything in together, we are the answer to this injustice. All of us here today and the countless supporters, women and allies, and those that identify as transgender men, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We are the answer to this injustice, and I leave you with this. A number of years ago, when Proposition 8 was being fought in California, a good mentor of mine by the name of Dan Guerrero, who coined the term Gaytino for being both gay and Latino, 
I was interviewing him, and he mentioned to me that this is not the time to retreat. This is the time to double down, triple down on the fight for gay rights. I borrowed from his language to say unequivocally that this is the time that we all work together in concert with one another, continue to build coalitions, and to protect Roe versus Wade. I end this by also sharing, although I am here to represent the LGBTQ Center, a couple words on behalf of uh, the Long Beach Immigrant Rights Coalition. Undocumented immigrant women also stand to lose a lot in this particular fight, especially when we have countless of undocumented immigrant women in conservative states that no doubt will end a woman's right to choose should this decision pass. And we need to be looking at those that are further in the margins and uplifting those communities in this fight. As some of my fellow speakers have shared, this is really about women in poverty, women of color, undocumented women, transgender men, and those that suffer the most when we allow social injustice to march forward. And the only answer is when there's a threat to justice anywhere, we all need to come out and support and move that arc of the moral universe forward with justice and love. Thank you. Muchas gracias. It's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker. Uh, I have Jane Bevis, for the president of the League of Women of Voters here in Long Beach. Please. Good morning, and thank you to Senator Gonzalez for hosting this event. My name is Jane Bemis. I am the current president of the League of Women Voters of the Long Beach area, and I'm here to represent our local league and the League of Women Voters United States. The League of Women Voters filed an amicus brief in the case of Dobbs versus Women's Health Organization in 2021. The court's decision to take this case and this alarming leak of a draft majority opinion suggesting Roe is about to be overturned, underscores the urgent need for California to stand up and take action. The leaked Supreme Court opinion is an affront to our values that support access to health care, reproductive rights, and individual liberties and privacy. In this draft opinion, if this draft opinion is finalized and leaked, it will be an unprecedented blow to women and will put the reproductive health of millions in danger. This opinion is also a direct attack on black and brown women and all underserved communities who already experience unfair barriers and limited access to adequate health care services. All people deserve the right to access to quality health care, including abortion, and the privacy to make reproductive choice. Today, Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood v. Casey are still the law and we will stand with our allies to protect women's access to care. It is critical that we show up in solidarity and make our voices heard for reproductive choice. Our democracy depends on it. Those of us living in California are fortunate to live in a state where women are continuing to be protected. I would now like to introduce Jamie Kenner, Public Affairs Specialist for Planned Parenthood Advocacy Project, Los Angeles County. Thank you. So let me start off by being clear, Roe v. Wade is still the law of the land and Planned Parenthood's health centers remain committed to doing everything they can to provide people with the care they need to control their lives, their bodies, and their futures. However, the draft opinion from Justice Alito proves that we cannot take our rights for granted. We cannot assume that the freedoms we enjoy will not be undermined, eroded, or erased by lawmakers and the courts. We know the harm this ruling will cause because we've seen it play out in Texas and other states where abortion access has been severely restricted. These burdens of seeking care will fall hardest on Black, Latino, Indigenous, and other people of color who are disproportionately affected by abortion bans. That is why we at Planned Parenthood Advocacy Project of Los Angeles County are proud to work alongside California leaders who stand up and fight when abortion rights and access are under attack. There is no question that California will meet this historic moment. We've been preparing for this. There are 13 bills in the legislature right now that protect and expand access to abortion in our state. In March, we worked with Senator Lena Gonzalez to pass SB 245 and remove cost sharing for abortion services. This week, 
The governor, along with the speaker and pro tem, announced their commitment to passing an amendment that will solidify abortion rights in California's constitution. And the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors, as well as the cities of Long Beach and West Hollywood, have also committed to historic investments in reproductive care. And so we are ready for this battle. Abortion is still legal and we will continue to fight here and across this country. We will not let this stop us. So thank you. Thank you again for your time, and I will hand it back to the one and only Senator Lena Gonzalez. Thank you, and I want to ask all the advocates to come up here, please, and um, we want to just thank them again for their incredible words. I think um, the sun started opening up as they were talking, and that's sort of uh, inspiration to me and also uh, uh, just a reminder for us that these are the advocates, these are the friends that have been doing this work for so very long, even before the threat of Roe v. Wade um, being overturned. So I wanna thank them so very much for their words, for their energy, and we'll continue to be fighting uh, with them alongside at the local, state, and federal levels. Thank you. Um, we'll open it up to any questions from media or any other questions from the crowd, if there are any. If not, I just wanna say thank you again. Let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you to our Attorney General, Rob Banta. Thank you to Mayor Garcia, Councilwoman uh, Suli Saro, Janine Pierce, Councilmember Uranga, Mary Zendejas, and to so many of you that have been here with us in the fight. We will continue to fight, and we don't just do this um, now for ourselves as it stands as a present. We do this for future generations. I have three boys. I want them to have a choice as well, and I want all uh, pregnant people in California and beyond to have opportunities uh, like this. So thank you.